Good morning. We're going to talk to you this morning about ancestral wounds because we think the topic is a good one. Now we're knowing that as we do this transmission today, Robin's a little taken back by what we're about to say, that there'll probably be one in about 100,000 people who can actually employ what it is we are going to give to you as a strategy or a way of getting over these. We're going to use an example of a situation, uh, kind of made up a little bit, for you to get an understanding of exactly how these wounds can play out and how you can get caught up in them and feel very justified in the responses that you have towards them. Many of you are in relationships, uh, in marriages, in friendships, in parenting. They will be uh, closely woven relationships that are going to be the reflectors or the things that are going to let you know of the wounds that are existing within you, you see. The only problem with a human is once they become stimulated, once they become emotional, they become uh, unconscious and they are not able to really get the teaching or the lesson that is uh, wanting to be provided to them through the uh, exchange that they are having in the conflicts with others, you see. So we're going to give you a little example so you can get the feel of this. If you could imagine that there is a, a, a nice young couple and they're getting ready to go on an overnight somewhere and have a nice time together and that someone in the family is uh, going to be watching the children for them. And as they are getting ready to go, uh, the wife, yes, one of them, decides to tell the husband uh, what it is he should do, that he is to contact the caregiver and let them know the time that they are wanting to leave and make sure that they are prompt about getting to the house on time, you see. And then somewhere in that exchange, uh, the caregiver uh, gets a call and the one is wondering uh, why they aren't there, yes. And the caregiver says, well, I am not to be there for another 20 minutes or so. And then the conflict now, as you see, starts to begin. So now the wife is agitated, she's aggravated, and she goes to the husband and says, why did you not do what I asked you to do? I am doing everything else, uh, packing up all the bags, organizing everything for the trip, and I gave you this uh, task or deed to do, and you did not carry it out, you see. He, of course, uh, gets very upset in return and starts to proclaim that he has, in fact, carried out the task, and he has uh, sent the text, and uh, both are arguing about uh, who has done or not done what it is that they are supposed to do, you see. Now, here's the part that only one in 100,000 people are going to be able to implement into their lives. So right now, you're stuck in this conflict, and you're pushing against each other. One of you feels as though uh, you're being treated unjustly, and the other of you feels as though uh, you are doing everything and organizing everything, and that... Uh, you've got a little bit of a control going on or a little bit of a, uh, a feeling of having to delegate or organize for another person, you see. And this is where the irritation is coming in between both of these individuals, you see. But what do they do? They start to push against each other. And in this way, they're now giving up their vibratory level. Both of them are now dipping down into the lower level of the three uh, energy centers that we have talked about in other recordings. And, and this is where conflict is. This is where the contrast is. This is where... Uh, your stuff isn't, we might say, the things that you are wanting to manifest. But they move into this justification of feeling, uh, one is feeling uh, uh, that he is being treated unjustly and he's very aggravated, and the other one is feeling uh, her control kicking up, that she has asked uh, and asked for this one to do something and he hasn't done it the way that she is wanting him to do it, you see. And so they are both feeling very justified in the negative responses that they are having, you see. But we have told you over and over again that what a master does is he feels what it is that he is feeling and he knows that the feeling is his and he knows that the person that is in front of them is perhaps the stimulator of that feeling, but just the same, that the emotions that they feel as the conflict is ignited and in the middle of it are theirs. They belong to them, you see. And they're going to come back again, you see. Because as you get justified, and as you blame the one in front of you for the conflict at hand, it doesn't matter whether you have in fact made the text or done it right. It doesn't matter whether the one has ignored you and not done what you asked them to do. What does matter is the feeling that you are having as you are engaging with each other is a message to you about you, you see. So how many of you, when you are stimulated in this way, are going to be able to Draw in a deep breath and get the message that is being sent to you about you. 
Many of you will say that you are wanting to heal yourselves of all of the childhood wounds that you have and ancestral wounds that you know you are carrying around, the things that cause these uh, unconscious responses, and that's what they are. You are unconscious when you become out of alignment like this. You just go into a rambling state and there is nothing that is being accomplished, you see. Now we can hear the responses already. What am I supposed to do if I did make the call? Be a doormat to this one? And then this one is going to say, well, what am I supposed to do? Ask and ask for something to get done that never gets done? And we would say if you were both emanating in a way that you wanted to emanate, neither one of you would be having the conflicts you're having. You are the causers of them. You are the ones that bring to you the arguments that you are involved in. So now you're starting to understand a little bit why one in 100,000 will actually be able to use this material that we are giving you today. What does the master do? He is this calm, relaxed, not needing to be right, not taking accountability of being wrong. He is just knowing that I'm going to hold my equilibrium and I'm going to do anything I can to disarm this thing because I want my alignment more than anything else. It doesn't matter if I am right or I'm wrong. None of it matters. All that matters is my emanation. We could go on and on in the hundreds of different stories that we could tell you that people feel justified in, right in, wrong in. None of it matters. All that matters is that whatever conflict is going on is a conflict within you. And when you adopt this idea of no conflict is worth it, no argument is worth it, I don't need to be right, you're going to find that these things just disappear and that people automatically do what you calmly ask them to do and that you do it right when they ask you. Because there's no players anymore. There's nobody that feels that he is being treated unjustly. And there is no one that feels they need to control anything. Because they are in this wonderful, happy state. And we would ask both of the people that we are talking about in this story that we are telling, how do you feel as you are bringing this to each other? I can tell you right now, you didn't feel good. And is it their fault? Is someone right and the other wrong? We would tell you the only right and wrong that we would agree with is that you went along with an unconscious emotion that lowered your vibratory level and gave up your manifestations for a little while until you got back into alignment. And now you've got some work to do to get going in the right direction again. And then you're going to ask us, where's your stuff? When's it coming? Why is it taking so long? When is it going to show itself to me? And all the while, you don't even notice all of these little infractions, little setbacks, little stallers of energy. That's what we call them. Stallers of energy. Now you got to get the engine started. Now you got to get the train going in the other direction. Get back up the hill. Start to coast a little. This is what you are doing in your day-to-day -day interactions. Clean it up once and for all within yourself. Notice the feeling that you have when you are in a conflict and stop worrying about what the other one is doing. It's for you. It's about you. It's your vibratory level. It's your manifestations you're giving up. It's your stuff that you're letting go of. We hope that you get this transmission with the love and dedication that we are sending it. We hope that you can be one of the one in 100,000 that can actually take a look inside yourself when you are in a conflict and decide what the emotion is and figure out where it came from so you can get rid of it. You don't get rid of it by suppression. You get rid of it by understanding, by loving yourself, by knowing you are the creator of it from the experiences you've had. you got to love the human out of it. But you can't blame the other human who is showing it to you. 
There will be no result there for you. Good day.